Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Glenn and today we're looking at some coins from Swaziland. Or as they call it now, Iswantini, because the people from Iswantini just got sick of being classed as people from Switzerland. So Swaziland, Switzerland, yeah, pretty much the same. I can see the confusion. Even though geographical location is uh, not the same. So anyway, uh, they first issued coins in 1974, and as you can see here, we have the 1974 one cent coin. So this one has a pineapple on it, and just remember, pineapple does go on pizza. If you don't like that, you're a heretic. Anyway, so this coin has Sobhusa the second, and he was king of Swaziland from, uh, I don't know, time in, I think 1922 or something to 1980 and his uh, wife who is now the queen and I forget her name but we'll look on the uh, uh, the one Lilingi so the currency is the Lilingi because 100 cents and they issued the coins in 1974 uh, basically to get signorage that's right you get signorage from the cost it is to produce the coin, so five cents probably cost like one or, or half a cent. 1974, and then you sell it for five cents. So that's how countries or mints make money. And here's the 2001, as you can see, it's a double rim. Never saw that before, so that's an error coin. Uh, probably not really that great. Needs to be a, a greater error if you wanted to uh, sell it as an error coin because that yeah, this is probably all quite common okay so your five cent so uh, as you can see it's a scallop shaped coin uh, the more famous scallop shaped coin is the hong kong two dollars and twenty cents and there's south vietnam uh, five dong and then we have uh, some coins from India, but these are, are not that popular. So, in 2011, they changed the shape of all these coins to round, and they issued the 5 and 10 cent in copper plated steel, 20 and 50 cent in uh, nickel plated steel, which are uh, all the coins are pretty much plated steel these days uh, because steel is just a lot cheaper. But in 2015, they issued smaller coins, all in steel. And these coins were demonetized. So you can't use these for payment anymore. But you can still sell them as numismatic items. And as you can see, the different shapes were issued in 1974. Uh, probably because of illiteracy. And I believe Swaziland has made a lot of progress in teaching people how to read so this was no longer needed but different shapes are good for people who can't read so they can just use the shape uh, to so, see what the specific denomination is also for people with uh, physical disabilities so if they're blind or, or, or something wrong with their sight they can use these coins just by touching it and finding out uh, the actual denomination so the five cent has uh, is it Azul's flower yeah I need to look that up uh, and well it's they don't use the five cent anymore they've drawn it from circulation because it's only worth half Australian cent so that's the Arum flower then we have the ten cent it has uh, so this one has sugar cane Okay, I think my camera's dying. So sugar cane, which is a crop, probably more of the tropical area. And as you can see, he has a goatee. God, this guy's a rebel. So all of these coins are probably worth a few dollars each. Uh, as a group, yeah, probably thirty to forty dollars. So the twenty cent, we have African elephant. So the the African elephant represents the queen, so that's probably what that's all about. And on the obverse, at the front of the coin, we have two portraits of um, 
Oh god, what's his name again? Ah, um, Maswati the third. So we've got the younger portrait, and we've got the older portrait, or middle age. So that's where that comes in. And this is one of my favourite coins. It's actually quite nice. Scallop shape, the 10 cent, yeah, it's a little bit weird. The 5 cent's fine. Then we have the 50 cents. So this is the coat of arms. So the coat of arms has a lion, uh, yeah, a lion. It represents a king and the elephant represents a queen, which is either the queen's king's mother or another female of the royal family. And the king, you know, sometimes... Uh, He's not present, obviously passed away. Traditional shield. So the queen and the king uh, have equal power of the running of the country. And either of them can rule on their own, but most of the time they rule concurrently and their family members. So 1986 had a mintage of $1 million, so which is probably worth about $5, $10. 2005 is a bit more common. Although there is no mintage figures, I would say, because the populations at the time was probably about 900,000, it probably would be a few million coins minted. Uh, Swaziland only mint coins every few years when they need it, because uh, it's a lot cheaper just to mint, you know, mint coins, like 5 million of these, last 5 years. And just keep them in storage and issue them when necessary. Saves on logistics, uh, the tender, and all that stuff. So, this is not the largest coin Swaziland issued. They did issue a large one Lilingi. But, uh, here I have the uh, smaller Lilingi. And if you look at the plural, and the singular of the coin. So, the singular is Lilangeni. Sorry, I might have said the name wrong before the plural is emalingeni so there's a difference in the front of the actual uh, pronunciation and that's the swazi language which is a uh, what language family is it afro-asiatic language family so yeah maybe you can look that up on wikipedia if you're interested so this was first issued in 1986 and obviously i have the 1998 there is no mintage figures for this but a lot of these years are actually harder to get and this one has so the queen's portrait is no idea and it's a bit hard to actually find some information on these okay nut fombi yeah i don't know how to pronounce her name and she's classed as the Natolu. Kati of Swaziland. I don't know how to pronounce it. Never heard it pronounced before. And that can also refer to a doctor or something like that. Someone of high importance. And on the... So this is the obverse with the king. The Swati the, uh, the third. And this one's actually quite a thick coin. If you look at the two, it's actually a lot thinner than the one. And... The two has, and the five, five is the coat of arms. So the two was issued first in 2005, so this is the 2008, and it has lilies on it. So there should also be different varieties that you can actually get in these coins. Uh, the later coins had a smaller date, so this one has the larger date. And these ones get a bit more expensive. A lot of these coins, some of the dates are harder to get. Like on Numista, only 17% of people have the two 1998 coin. Uh, out of all the people, we've got the two Emelangini. And the 1995 seems to be a lot harder to get. And if we look at the five... Also first issued in 1995. So 1995 when these are issued, this was equivalent to one Australian dollar. But now that's about 12 in Malangani, it was one Australian dollar. So this is worth about 40 cents. So as you can see, there's also 
inflation, but there's also devaluation of the currency that is going to happen. And looking at Numistar, only 3% of people have the 95 coin. 16, 19% of people who have this coin uh, have this date, 1996. And then as you get to the other dates, 2003 seems to be the hardest to get. But what I've seen is that most of these coins are actually in circulated condition. So it's a bit hard to get these coins in uncirculated. As far as I know, most years they don't issue mint sets. So to get a coin graded in a high grade, uh, you're probably going to struggle to get anything in the 60s or you probably won't get anything in the 70s in the US grading system. So those ones will be quite expensive. But this is actually a nice coin set to actually have. But these ones are all my spares. So these ones are all for uh, resale. Because there's no point in keeping uh, doubles, triples, quadruples of any coin in, uh, that you have. So anyway, I'd like to say thank you very much. Uh, and the last thing I want to do is compare the South African 5 Rand, 5 Alingi. As you can see the difference. So this one's a biometal coin because uh, the copper nickel coin was counterfeited quite often. This was probably also counterfeited pretty much like the 2 euro because it's pretty similar. Uh, but as you can see, they're different metals. And I could spend this one in Swaziland, but I can't spend this one in South Africa. So anyway... These ones are more valuable anyway to a coin collector. So, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching my video. I hope it helps you with your coin collecting. And if you want to know the values of these coins, just leave a comment down below and I'll try and reply. Thank you and goodbye.